What is the election of God? In 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 4, we just read it. He says, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. He says, we know that you're elect. And I'll just tell you the answer and make it short. Elect equals saved. Elect equals saints. Elect equals those that are in Christ Jesus. And this is a problem today because people say, no, Israel is God's elect. And that's partially true. In fact, the first mention of, Israel, of that is Israel, but it's Jesus Christ. And I'm going, to, I'm going to drop a bunch of verses, but in Isaiah 42, he says, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect. This is Jesus Christ, in whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment unto the Gentiles. If you continue through in Isaiah 45, and then you'll hit 49. In 49, he actually says that Israel is his firstborn that will bring Jacob back to him. And he's making a distinction about Jesus Christ being the elect. So what does elect mean? Well, we have an election sign, right? Hey, and now think about it. Vote for me. I'm a good guy. I'm putting out the call of election. If you believe me and you make that call, you go into the little voting booth and you pretend like the computer actually listens to what you push and you trust that computer to accept your push, I want the good guy. And they say, uh, try again, there are no good guys. No, I'm just kidding. All right. um, when we go into the election, we pick our candidate. We make a selection. If you have selected Jesus Christ as your God, then you are the elect. You picked the elect, you are the elect. Election in the Bible means Jesus or those in Jesus. It means Christ or those in Christ. It does not mean an ethnic group of people that are Hebrew. It does not mean the people that live in modern day nation of Israel that don't have the ethnicity or the religion. It doesn't even mean the religion of Judaism. God's elect always means those that are in Christ or it's talking about Christ. You're in Romans chapter 9, look at verse number 6. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Okay, so it, wow, that's interesting. Israel's not Israel. Well, not all Israel is Israel. The Israel that you see of the people, they're not all God's people is what he's about to say. If I were to look in this church and say, I see these are all Christians, well, maybe I should say, these are all professing, professing Christians, but if you don't have faith in your heart, then not all the Christians are really Christians. That would be what's being said here, if that helps. Right? So they're not all Israel, which are of Israel. Verse 7, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all the children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Uh, salvation is not by your bloodline. Verse 8, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. God's people are those that believed his promise. It doesn't matter who your daddy was, what your bloodline is, where your zip code is. Now look at verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Those that are elect, not, they didn't work their way there, it's because they're calling on the name of the Lord. They believe in Jesus Christ. They've selected him. They've elected him. They become the electorate, if you will. Right? Go to chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Who are the elect? Well, the elect is Jesus, and we are the elect by faith in Jesus. Romans chapter 11, look at verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but... The election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Romans eleven seven 7 clearly says Israel is not God's elect. What a bold statement. That nation is not God's elect. Judaism is not God's elect. No, it's the children of promise, those that have believed by faith. In fact, go to verse 11 in this chapter. Romans eleven eleven. I say then, have they stumbled? That they should fall, God forbid, but rather through their fall, that's the physical nation, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. The elect are the saved Gentiles. The elect are the saved Jews. The elect are the saved Israel. The elect are those that have put their faith in Christ 
period. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1. Go to 1 Peter chapter number 1. So in Thessalonians, he says, you are a, a good example of a church because you've sounded out the word and because you are the election of God and you come from a great multitude of different backgrounds and religions, but you have all come to be in Christ. Election are those that are in Christ. In 1 Peter 1, look at verse number 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Benthia. Now, this is interesting. Strangers, that means they're foreigners. That's what the word means. These are not those that were on inside of Judaism. Continue in verse 2. Elect... According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Those that are in Christ are the elect. Go to chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. When you get there, look at verse number 5. So the strangers are called elect in chapter 1. In chapter, five, in chapter 2, verse 5, he says... Ye also, as lively stones, are built up and spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Interesting. He's calling foreigners a holy priesthood. He's not talking about that old priesthood under the old covenant. He's not talking to Levites. Verse 6, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion, a chief cornerstone, elect, that's Jesus, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. We won't be ashamed when we believe on Jesus Christ. Verse 9 in this chapter, 1 Peter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. These are strangers, remember. A peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Now think about it. To the foreigners in all these countries that are elect because they have faith in Jesus Christ, you're the priesthood, you're the holy nation. He, and notice what he says. This is so important in verse 10 which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Is it safe to say that Israel was a people at a time? Of course. They were a people at a time that this was written. Now, they were under the Roman rule, and they were called Judea, and Israel had disappeared long ago because of God's judgment. But some claimed Israel, some claimed Judaism, some said they're Jews. They used those phrases somewhat interchangeably. And here God says, this, my people are not a nation. We're an invisible nation. We're the people of God. Those that are in Christ are the holy nation. But we are not a nation. I mean, if I said, well, I'm Irish, and so we're all Irish here, right? Who, who's not Irish? Raise your hand. Oh, man, I thought so good. I thought high things of you people, and you're not even Irish? I mean, <laughs> you say, what's wrong with you? Are you a racist? Now think about it. He says, you were not a people, but now you're the people of God. We're elect by Jesus Christ. We are the election of God. 